What makes a BL popular? Well if you look at the currently airing ones, I bet there is only Cutie Pie which is having an extremely successful feat. Their last episode, which featured three lengthy kisses and a cameo of Bound Prom, completed 1 million views within 12 hours. If you look at the YouTube views, it can be termed as a very successful BL, however the series in itself is getting mixed reactions. One side a lot of viewers are complaining about the lack of plot and the stagnant story, whereas on the other side, the Fujoshis are absolutely loving the fluffs it presented. In one of the online forums, a Fujoshi, in defense of the series commented, who watches BL for plot and logic? And she was half true, if not fully. Come on, we the viewers were overwhelmingly ready to ignore the logic in a story where a virgin guy on his 30th birthday becomes a wizard, or humans are touching and kissing ghost. However, when it comes to plot, I tend to disagree with her, because a good plot attracts me. But if we look at the second most popular BL currently on YouTube called Secret Crush on You, I think you all will know the formula for successful BL. And that is, throw almost all of the known BL tropes, add ample amount of fluff and have a montage of the lovemaking scenes of the leads. And somehow Cutie Pie has been overtly successful in this. Somehow, the two future lineups of Dom and D, Middleman's Love and Bed Friend, depended upon the success of Cutie Pie, hence, they used the same formula that was used on their first production, Why Are You? And it worked again. I still remember, when Why Are You? aired a two-episode montage of the honeymoon of Fighter and Tutor citing some unforeseen circumstances, Fujoshis went gaga and some even said they were ready to watch that for all 12 episodes. It's 2022 and things have changed, now we don't have to wait for Friday to watch a BL from GMM TV. We have got so many options, and we got a BL airing almost every day, and the weekends are more than full. And if you look at the numbers of the 8 episode of Secret Crush on you aired 4 days ago and the finale episode of Not Me aired 2 weeks ago, the YouTube views of Secret Crush on you are better. When I watched the teaser of Secret Crush on you, I knew it was not my cup of tea, and I didn't bother to watch till now, as I am making this video, I finally watched first two episodes, and I already know what's gonna happen in latter episodes. And I don't know if it improves in the latter episodes, but from what I saw, the production value of the recently finished GMM TV series on Shantae is far better than Secret Crush on You and you can see the YouTube views of the finale episode of On Shantae, which Secret Crush on You usually gets within 24 hours. Another maker who knows what the Fujoshis want is the queen of problematic tropes Mame. In her very first project as a producer, she gave the horny Fujoshis a treat on the first episode itself of Tharn Type, where, Tharn when giving an unconscious type a hickey as a prank, not only stops at that, but fulfills his perverted desires too by kissing his lips and face. And somehow, she kinda used the same formula in her latter successful productions like Tharn Type Season 2 and Don't Say No. And her future lineups Love in the Air and Past Love in the Future also will be no different from the glance of the synopsis of both the projects. Even the director of Tharn Type Season 1 T. Bundit knew the primary audience, hence, when he made Lovely Writer, he made sure, along with a stellar story and plot, some long lovemaking scenes were accommodated. His next venture, Something in My Room, if you have watched the uncut longer version, is a very good, however, it was not able to garner much attention like his previous projects as the fluffs and other BL tropes were not used excessively. However, he looks hell-bent on not following the BL tropes, and his upcoming project will also be a different one, much to the disappointment of Fujoshis. And to be honest, I have no complaints towards the makers of Cutie Pie and Secret Crush on you, because, the success of their current series determines the sponsorship of their future projects. The smaller production houses can't compare with a big conglomerate like GMM Grammy, who have set sponsors ranging from green tea and cars to instant noodles and seaweed, irrespective of the performance of the series.
and all the directors do not have that much autonomy like Bakauf who was able to make He's Coming to Me, which though underrated at the time of airing, will be remembered as a classic for years to come. Well in the end, all I can say, with the sheer number of BLs either you have to have some X factors in your BL or you just need to throw every known BL tropes along with a lot of fluffs, and the latter seems a safe bet. What do you think?